This trapezoid clearly has a slope of 2, easily calculated, average altitude of 5. Right? Now, if we take, let this represent the trapezoid, my finger, the x-axis, and rotate this thing about the x-axis, what do we get? Very much like this, right? It's even got kind of the right shape. It's tapered this way, as this would be beveled according to the slope at the top. Okay? And it's going to have then what volume? Well, the volume is going to be approximately equal to the cross-sectional area times the width. Now, what are we how, what are we going to use as basis for calculating the cross-sectional area? Well, we've got to use a radius because a cross-section is going to be a circle, right? But we're not going to be far wrong if we use the average altitude to calculate the cross-sectional area, right? So cross-sectional area is approximately equal to pi r squared r equal to the average altitude. Okay. Then the volume is going to be pi r squared, where r is the average altitude, right? So actually, I'm going to call this r star. It's like r star squared, just to indicate, just to make this a specific number, okay, rather than the general radius, right? So it would be pi times r star squared times the average, well, times the Altitude, right? Now the cross section's in this direction, so the altitude's in this direction, and the altitude is this, right? So that would be times delta x, which would be equal then pi times 5 squared times 0.2. Okay? Now that's going to be 25, and 0.2 times 25 is 5, so it's going to be 5 pi. And the thing that we got when we did this is a solid of revolution. So I'm going to say this is the approximate volume of the resulting solid of, solid of revolution. Okay? Now, if we've got a curve, I'm going to draw three coordinate axes for the volume, you know, for three dimensional space, I think we're familiar with that. But okay, and here's y, and let's say here's x, and this is z, and we're not actually going to use z, but just to visualize the three dimensions. Let's say we have a curve, looks like this, in the xy plane. We revolve this curve about the x-axis, what do we get? Well, we get something that's really not that hard to draw. We just kind of do, a, you know, we can do, do a, a, a auxiliary set of axes here if we want. Uh, and we're going to come out to about here and down to about here and back to about here. So I draw something to kind of represent a circle here. Okay. And then we do the same thing here. And we get kind of a wireframe, then we can shade it and so forth. We say, okay, well, we got arcs here, here, and here. Okay, it's open here. It's kind of like a partial horn. Okay? So how do we find the volume of this thing? 
Well, what I'm going to say is, let's just start out by saying, okay, let's just start with the x, y here, and here's our curve. Okay? Now let's divide that curve up into trapezoids, approximate it by trapezoids, and revolve each trapezoid. Same as we did here. Well, we know what to do now if we have a trapezoid, right? So we can get a good approximation to the volume. Okay? Then we can ask ourselves, well, okay, what happens if we increase the number of divisions? Let the number of divisions approach infinity. You get an integral. And it's related in a very simple manner to the expression you get here. Okay?